was shoving 162 pounds as high as an airliner can fly in 40 seconds. I would say that people that got into experimental rocketry are obsessed. I went and bought a bicycle and sat there for a long time and what the heck, I threw a rocket on it. A lot of people close their eyes, they see women. I see rockets. You're building the rocket, you're building the motors, you're doing everything. Those are real, real rocketeers. Build something with your bare hands and watch it go up, way up in the sky. Performance rocketry is, uh, is starting to specialize in really high performance, large kits. And Whoa! I'm Kerry McNally, and we are in the middle of nowhere, which is just where you have to be to safely launch some of the biggest monsters you are ever going to see. Not long ago, this entire area was a wheat field. Today, however, we're going to be harvesting a different kind of crop, rockets, big rockets. We are in sweltering Argonia, Kansas for the 22nd annual LDRS launch, which sounds like a very scientific acronym, but actually it stands for Large Dangerous Rocket Ship, which is precisely what you're gonna see dueling head-to-head -head in a spectacle we call <laughs> the Rocket Challenge. Once a year, amateur rocketeers from around the globe meet in one wide open space to test themselves, their rockets, and each other. Cloudbusters, 39 rocket drag race. All heads are armed. Three, two, one, here we go. Anybody see who won? <laughs> In just six days, nearly 2,000 rockets of all sizes will blast off 58 pads, one by one, and in head-to-head -head competition. This black okay, one's going to be a close. At it. Yeah, you, you got, got a real good. He's got a chance. Oh, yeah. The first challenge, to find out how they launched the really big stuff, like Hillbilly Rocketry's Gila Monster. For anything this size, the launch is just the final moment of a challenge that started six months and 1,200 miles away. For Gila Monster, the road began in Phoenix. This is uh, where we keep the Gila Monster, and this is how we get it to launches. And this is kind of where we got the name Hillbilly Rocket Trees, because we had this old beat-up pickup truck. Somebody made a comment that uh, we were just a bunch of hillbillies, and we couldn't beat them in a drag race. So uh, we kind of adopted the name of Hillbilly Rocket Tree. Just a bunch of us guys that got together and been working on rockets for quite a while. Some of us have even graduated from high school. Here you can see the different parts of the rocket stuffed in there, and they're covered with some cardboard protectors. At the last launch, we uh, bubble wrapped up a six pack of uh, Gila Monster beer and flew it in the nose cone uh, to about 6,900 feet and then recovered it safely and then passed them out to uh, 
most of the people that helped us out with the motors and stuff. That's basically one Gila Monster, 16 inches in diameter, 21 feet long, probably about 275 pounds. 300 man hours later, the hillbillies are ready to put the Gila Monster to the test in a Kansas wheat field. I'm a little worried about things not going so well. You know, like the motor blowing up or parachute not opening. Got a little uneasy feeling about that. Okay, we got to be careful here. Hold in. I'm talking. Actually, this is the fun part. You get to show off the rocket while you're riding out, and uh, all the little kids come running up. Whoa! Move this little horse in. Yeah. Okay. Gentlemen, we are ready to fly the Gila Monster. Let's do it. Let's do it. I know. Right before they push the button, there's always that time where you're waiting, you're wondering why they're not pushing the button. That's when I get nervous. Going in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, A little luck and a lot of thrust boosts Gila Monster to 6,579 feet. Out. Hitting a maximum airspeed yeah. of 505 miles per yeah. hour on the way up. But well, there ain't no luck involved, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. Right up on the truck. Did you see the flame on that thing? Oh, that couldn't have been any better. Poetic that's, that's the most beautiful it's ever flown. Good job. Thank you, honey. Um, I help. I need another credit card. That's coming right down here. Right here. Right here. It's like clockwork. Like clockwork. Yeah, man. Thanks. <laughs> you look like you need a beer. Yeah, I, we need beers. Now beers I'm happy. Now we're happy. One launch down, 1,999 to go. Hillbilly rocketry. Yeah, we are the hillbilly rocketry. Yeah. At Rocket Challenge, big comes in a variety of sizes. But to get the best inside look, there is only one choice. Massive. This is Team Project Aurora. We're going to build a 20-foot rocket. It's going to do close to Mach 2, about 30,000 feet uh, on a P motor. It'll be the biggest motor at, at LDRS. It's going to roll any way, anything anybody else is going to do. Let's get into our T-shirts now, you guys, and let's get to work. we got a lot to do. I'm Pat Bortzlick. My job in this particular uh, project is, uh, is, is, is a power plant itself. My name is Dan Stratton. And I'm the designer of the rocket on this project. When it comes down to it, a rocket is basically fins, a body tube, and a nose cone. Inside is a motor to send it up fast, and a recovery system to bring it down slowly. The first step, mold the polymer airframe. What we're doing is we're rolling carbon fiber, and we roll it on a mandrel, something to shape it over. This is uh, just like you would see, even though they have machines to help them, this is be what they would be doing to make an F-16 fighter. And material over the top of that. Okay, is that? Then a constricting material over the top of that. Uh, let's see if he can pull that out of there. All right. We'll put it in a curing oven. Buddy. Let's put her in. Here she go. Yep. Here she goes. When we cure it, the constricting uh, tape pinches down on this thing, squeezes all the excess resin out of this thing, and you have yourself one strong fabric. And 